Legos? Uh, Cajun, you looked a bit upset, I guess, by the crowd reaction after the fight. Uh, what, what were you saying to them we couldn't hear in the back? Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's just, it upsets me when two of the world's best martial artists, because really that's what we are in the UFC, we're the greatest martial artists really that have ever lived because the, the state of martial arts right now is at its highest evolutionary form that it's ever been. So some of the greatest martial arts that have ever, martial artists that have ever walked the face of the earth are in the cage competing, giving their heart and bleeding for you. And then because you don't like the way the judges scored it, you're gonna boo the fighter, you're gonna boo that martial arts master. Like, it just seems very dishonorable to me and it upsets me greatly. I have a bit of an issue uh, with the fans of mixed martial arts because of the way they treat the fighters. And in my opinion, it stems from the top. Like a lot of the time you'll see Dana White just giving the fighters so much grief. If you don't go out and just sling leather and bleed for him, then he's talking all this smack about him, you know? And because the leader of the organization acts like this, then it's so much easier for the fans to act like this. So it really upsets me. It's a, it's a huge problem that I have with it. What do you think Dana White would have said about that fight? Like, and how did you feel about the fight itself? I think Dana probably would have liked that fight. He likes it when people are, uh, are fighting with their heart and not just with their skill. Um, I think that's very easy for, for fans to understand. Uh, whereas sometimes if you're displaying your skill and you're reserving your heart, because that's not a card that you should lead with in my opinion. You should lead with that card, you should use that card when all else fails. But you have to have it, right? So I think that Dana would have been happy just because we both showed our hearts in that fight. Um, but I, the fans, I believe, it was just they were upset with the way the decision went. They wanted their hometown or, or close town uh, guy to win and he didn't so they're upset. Did you think you had done enough? Uh, I believe that I did enough, yeah. I believe that I won the first and the second round. I was not happy with the third round. Um, I definitely got hit way more than I like to get hit. Like I said, I like to lead with my skill card. I don't like to have to show my heart. Um, but it is there and I will use it if I need to but I'll do everything to avoid that if possible. When it went to split decisions, did you worry that it might not go to your mind? No, I wasn't, I wasn't worried that it wasn't going to go my way. I, was, I just accept whatever's going to happen. Uh, I definitely thought that it was possible that it didn't go my way. Um, but I, I know that everything happens for a reason. I know that I'm here for a reason. If I win, it's for a reason. It'll, it will serve me to my highest good. Just as, what, as if I lose, it's for a reason and it will also serve me to my highest good. Okay, so congratulations on the win. You said in the cage, as you just said here, you wouldn't have been surprised any which way, but what do you think the difference was in the judges' eyes? What do you think you did a little more of? Uh, I think it just comes down to how you score the second round. Um, I was able to, to hurt him in the second round with the right hand, um, which really, really told the tale of that second round. And then I was also able to take him down, and, uh, and for the, for the, as, as far as I remember anyway, um, with all the ground exchanges, I was getting the better of him. I was on top more than he was on top. So I believe that second round should have gone to me. Obviously, I won the first. Obviously, he won the third. So it really just depends on how you scored that second round. Was the game too close in the second round? It seemed like it really like it. It was, uh, it was tight. It wasn't, it wasn't to the place where I was really, I was really worried about it. But it was to the place where I had to, I had to remain calm and slow my breathing and slow my heart rate and just kind of wait him out because if I gave him certain adjustments, he could have he could have tightened that up and finished it had I given him the position. You speak as, like as a martial artist more than a lot of fighters do. Do you think that that was a fight that martial artists can appreciate because both of you were very well matched, either in skill, whether it was your strikes, his strikes, or the ground exchange? I believe so. Yes, I believe we both acted with honor. Uh, we were both very respectful of one another, which is the basis of all martial arts: um, self-discipline and respect and honor. Uh, so I believe that all martial artists, traditional martial artists especially, would, would definitely appreciate that fight. Cajun, you clearly um, have no fear in speaking your mind about how you feel about um, you know, how you believe fighters should be respected and by their promoters and so on. What's this thing that you're involved with called Spearhead? Uh, yeah, so Project Spearhead is an, organization, is an organizing effort. Right, so we are not necessarily a union effort. Uh, we are an organ. We're just a organizing a collection of fighters, and then from there we will decide. We will vote 
uh, and, and have a democratic election as to where we're going to go moving forward from that. So, we, well, one thing that we're going to do is we're going to enlist the, uh, the National Labor Relations Board and they're going to investigate to see whether or not we are employees or independent contractors. But once we figure that out, what they think, then we can go and decide, okay, do we want to go down the route of attempting to be recognized as employees? Or would we like to strip away all of the things that make us employees and remain independent contractors and go the Ali route, uh, Ali Act route and, uh, and, and just deal with it that way? We may do a CBA, we may not do a CBA, we may do multiple CBAs for multiple organizations because uh, from what I want anyway, and I'm just one man, I'm the interim vice president, but I do by no means have the uh, unilateral say over this. Um, I believe that we should have multiple different organizations, that we should have fighters from Bellator, fighters from Invicta, fighters from the UFC, fighters from 1FC, and we should all be together and have multiple different CBAs for each organization. And then we're more like, um, structured more like ACTRA or, or SAG. That's the model that I want to direct us towards. But like I said, we're a, we're a democratic group, so I don't have to say. Everybody's gonna have to vote and we'll see what we do. Okay, should you make sense to you next? Uh, I, would, I was supposed to fight Habilov um, in this fight and he ended up pulling out, he had a knee injury. So I'm probably gonna take some time off. I don't usually fight more than twice a year. I, I liked about six months in between fights, so that should give him time to uh, come back after his knee injury. Um, and if, the, if that made sense for him, uh, and it made sense for the UFC, I would love to have that fight next. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, guys.